Hi, I'm Jimmy. In this video, we're gonna look at the basics of what a bond is, and then how we can actually go about buying a bond. We're gonna use Fidelity as an example, but the same process should be true in most brokerage accounts. So we'll go through an example of what to look for, what's important, and what could make a bond good or bad depending on the current situation. But before we jump into that, I just wanna tell you about a website that we are building, an investing website that we're building. I will leave timestamps in the, in the description below if you wanna skip past this part. But basically we're building an, an investing research platform. We're starting with different ways to value stocks. We've already built the discounted cash flow calculator. We're fine tuning that and we're going to be adding all of the other different valuation methods out there. But the idea behind the investing research platform is that we're gonna to try to simplify the process. So if we were to pick a stock like a company like Tesla, well, we punch in the ticker and the, comp the website will kick back what valuation methods are best for that company. And then it will give you what the fair value should be using that valuation method. It will work for banks, it will work for large cap companies like Apple. But then after we do the valuation sides of it, then from there, the plan is to add balance sheets, income statements, company research reports, uh, annual reports, things along those lines. And this is a long-term big picture thing, but if you wanna sign up to get access to this, if you sign up now, you can sign up on an annual basis. And if you sign up, you, you will lock in the price indefinitely. The price will never go up on you if you sign up now as we're starting to roll out the different features. For now, let's jump into the basics of what a bond is. Okay, so at its very core, let's imagine that we're an investor and then we have a company. A bond, unlike a stock, a bond is simply a loan to that company. So when we buy a stock, we're actually buying a piece of the company. We owe, own a piece of the company. If we buy a bond, we are essentially lending to that company. They owe us the money back. Now, the very basics of how it would work is we would take our initial investment, we give it to the company, we lend them the money. They then have to pay us interest back. So you, most bonds pay on a semi-annual basis, so twice a year. So at the start of the year, they would pay us our interest payment. At the end of the year, or at the halfway point of the year, they would pay another interest payment. And then, depending on when the bond matures, so at some point that we're going to get our principal back, let's say it's a one-year bond, we'd get two interest payments, and then we would ultimately get our principal back to us. So the advantage to owning a bond is that versus a stock is that a stock, you don't really know what you're gonna get. You, a stock might pay a dividend, but you're not sure, are they gonna keep that dividend? They, the company generally has the right to change the dividend amount, to pause the dividend, increase it, whatever they want. With a bond, well, it's a contractual agreement that we will pay, we will lend the company, let's say $1,000, and in return, the company is going to pay us 5% a year or $50 a year. If it was a semi-annual payment, which most bonds are, that would be $25 every six months. Again, the advantage to this is the, the certainty and the stability of it. But for now, let's jump over and look at how we can actually go ahead and buy one or how we can even look to see which ones are out there. Okay, so when we jump over to the Fidelity website, well, I go to this page by going to the news and research section and then down to fixed income bonds and CDs. So when we scroll down here, we can see bonds. Now, within this, Fidelity gives us the option to filter out different types of bonds. And then we can see at this middle section here, well, they have each type of bond grouped differently. So this first page, the tab we start at, at least in the case of Fidelity, is US Treasuries. These are government bonds. These are as close to, we get, as, close to as any investor can get as a guaranteed investment. They also pay because they are so guaranteed. They're also, they also pay generally a lower interest rate. We can get CDs, uh, municipal bonds, corporate bonds, agency bonds, or you can look at all of them. You can see all of them, they have 124,000 and some odd other bonds. The bond market is enormous. It is bigger than the stock market. There's more money in bonds than there are in stocks. And that says a lot. But in this example, let's jump over to corporate bonds. So once we get into the corporate bond section, well, now we can, let's say we wanted to filter this according to their credit rating. So in Moody's, AAA, very best credit rating a company could have, we could say, okay, only show me the AAA corporate bonds. 
you can see that this rating goes all the way down to BAA2 or BAA3. These are, they call them investment grade bonds. That's what this section is up here, investment grade bonds. High yield are considered bonds that are, have more risk. Their credit rating isn't quite as high. In fact, when we go into the high yield section, we can see the Moody ratings should have, yes, the Moody's rating changed. They go from C all the way to BA1. Again, the higher the rating, the closer you get to AAA, the higher the quality of the company. But the higher the quality of the company, the lower the interest rate you pay. Now, let's imagine we can go through and filter those out, but let's imagine that we had a specific company we're interested in. Perhaps we're interested in a company like Microsoft. Well, here we can scroll back up to the top. Instead of searching by QCIP, QCIP, by the way, is an identifier for all investments. All investments will get, it's like a combination of letters and numbers. It's, I forget how many digits, 10, 12, something like that. Different digits, uh, letters and numbers that, I, that are specifically for that particular investment. It's a weird way to search. Uh, but what you can do is you can say, I want to search for corporate bonds. And then we could type in the company name here. So when I search for Microsoft, well, we get this result back. We can see that there's 30 different possible investments for Microsoft. When we click on it, we end up here. Okay, now here's the specific information about the difference bond, about each of the bonds tied to Microsoft. Let's break this down a bit and look at what information in the bond is important. Okay, so on Microsoft's bond list, well, the top one we can see has a coupon rate of 5.2%. Now it's very important, the coupon rate is essentially the interest rate that they're gonna pay us. So if, if we were to buy that at 100, and this is the important part, if we were to pay 100 for that bond, right, 100% of the, of the par value, if we were to pay par value, it would be 5.2% per year. But these are trading afterwards. Many times you will buy bonds from other people so you won't pay par value. And if that's the case, the interest rate that we want to look at, or the coupon rate, or the, the yield that we want to pay attention to, is the yield to maturity. In this case, they have yield to maturity ask and yield to maturity bid. In our case, if we're buying the bond, we want to, we are going to pay the ask price. So we want yield to ask. Now, I know that this is small, so, so to try to make it a bit bigger, I'm going to click inside this first bond here. We're going to go over to price and performance where we can find a lot of the key information. Yes, we agree to the, uh, their data agreement. Now let's look at some of this key information. I'm gonna zoom in a bit. So when we look at the details of this particular bond, well, we can see that they have yield, ask yield to worst and ask yield to maturity. Now, the idea behind it last, uh, ask yield to worst is that some bonds can be called away from us. So if we own the bond, the company can buy it back early and that would be in theory like the worst case scenario. Then there's yield to maturity. We can see in this case, the bond yield, uh, the yield to maturity and yield to worst is the same. So odds are this bond is not callable. And I double checked, it's not callable. Uh, but we can see that right now the yield is about 4.6%, but we saw it was 5.2%. And the reason that the yield has dropped, the yield to maturity has dropped is because of the price. If we look at the ask price, it is uh, about $107 per bond, 107%. It's not $107, it's 100% of par value. We'll come back to that in a second. So because the price has gone up, the yield has gone down. We're paying more for the same 5.2. The 5.2% is important to us because we know that's going to be about $52 per year. You Most bonds pay twice a year. So Twice a year, every six months, you get 26 bucks. Simple enough. And then at the end, you will get 100% of par value back. Again, par value is probably $1,000, but we'll come to that in a second. When we look at their spread to treasuries, well, what that does is it takes a bond of a similar maturity, but it compares it to a treasury bond. So this bond, when we scroll up, we can see this bond matures on 6 one 2039. So a bond, a treasury bond that matures about the same at the, about the same time, about the same distance from today, well, that would be, this bond is 75 or 77 basis points higher, 7 tenths of, 7.77 tenths of 1%. So slightly under 1%. That makes sense for a company like Microsoft, a large blue chip company that has tons of cash and tons of cash flow, and nobody's really questioning whether or not they could pay off their bonds. And we can see the treasury benchmark information just below it here. 
Okay, now let's pretend we wanted to jump in and we wanted to buy this bond. Well, when we scroll up and we go to the top right hand corner of this bond page, we will see the buy option. Here's what it looks like when we click in there. Okay, so over here in Microsoft's bond order buy or buy sell order page, basically, well, we could see our first option is to buy. We, we're going to buy. Now we're going to want to buy one bond. Now, this is very important because as we could see what it says down here, one bond equals $1,000 par value. So if we say we want to buy one and it was trading at par value, it would cost us $1,000. We could see the price up here. It says it's trading at 106.89. Well, we move the decimal place one decimal place over. That's $1,068.99. So that is what it will cost us for one bond. So if we want two bonds, it will cost us a bit over $2,000. That's, that's how the math of this works. Bonds are generally quoted on a percentage basis. So again, move the decimal place from these are, bonds are quoted in hundreds. If this, in this case, par value is a thousand. If par value were 10,000, one bond would be worth $10,000. So one bond is going to cost us $1,068 at this price. So we say, all right, we want one bond here. We could do limit price or limit yield. I think limit yield is easier because usually that you know where you're trying to go with that. So we could see the ask yield is up here, 4.6%. Well, we could enter 4.6 right there. Then we have uh, fill or kill or day order. Day cancels at the end of the day. Fill or kill says basically, give me my entire order or don't give it to me at all. You know, I don't want like partial delivery or anything like that. And then the final option that I was covering up there was, do you want to do it with cash or do you want to do it on March? Again, that depends on every investor what they want to do. But that's the basics of how we can go about investing in bond. And if you're curious if bonds are actually a good investment, we've got a video coming out for that next, looking at whether or not bonds, given the current economic environment, are good compared to something like stocks. And if you'd like to sign up to get access to our website, which we're currently in beta version. We rolled out the discounted cash flow calculator and we will gradually roll out all the other features as time goes on and as we gradually build them. If you want to come over, we have a private investing community. You can join there. Again, if you sign up, we are locking in the price so the price will never go up on you once you sign up. Thank you so much for sticking with me all the way to the end of the video. I really do appreciate it. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.